Hey, what's up, Ron here. Thank you for joining me. In today's video, I thought I'd share with you a fun process where you can sit back, relax. You don't have to see my face this time, I'm just recording audio. Um, this process is a painting I did with no pencil lines. Once again, I've been fascinated by these uh, and it's not gonna be as much of a how-to necessarily as I just want to really share with you uh, this process and the result and kind of the things I've been uh, thinking about. Uh, I hope for this one to be nice for audio listening and then you can check out once in a while uh, the painting's progression. Uh, one thing that's been fascinating me with painting this way is how um, I get a very immediate impression of what things look like. Um, I find that my impression of the thing that I paint can very easily be tainted by pencil lines. Now, it doesn't mean pencil lines are wrong and never use them and there's none of that. If you've been watching me for a while, you know I don't think really about things in that way. Um, I think it's more about whatever serves you and your purpose. Uh, but to me, I find that to see the paint as it is directly on paper does something for me. And I sometimes make the comparison to painting with pen and ink directly without uh, uh, the pencil as well. And kind of what you put on paper is final. Um, and there's a lot of magic to that, in my opinion, and my experience, more importantly. Um, it's no longer an opinion, really. It's just about how I experienced the painting process uh, that I find very fun. Now, if we talk a bit about materials, I'm using hot press paper here. Uh, you know, I usually use cold press, but I have become, uh, with the, the years of painting, uh, a fan of hot press paper as well. Um, I think it serves for an interesting purpose where um, when the paper is smooth, very practically speaking, uh, the, the shapes, lines and contours are smoother. They're not influenced by the jagged surface. This goes for pencil and also for the painting stage. Uh, and I quite like that. Um, so I, don't, I had this piece of paper laying around and I was like, let's just paint something over it. Uh, and I quite like this scene. Now, one thing that's very challenging for many people with these kinds of scenes is the greens. Uh, and greens, for some odd reason, are very easy for people to misinterpret and end up with a result that they did not desire. We're not talking in terms of right or wrong or even accurate here, but more, do you like the thing that you created? Um, now, to me, a lot of it is just comes down to simplicity. Uh, that's my way, that's how I discovered it works for me, uh, which means uh, I'll use very few colors. Uh, mostly here it's phthalo blue and lemon yellow. Uh, both Daniel Smith um, pigment, if I'm not mistaken, or at least identical. Um, this lemon yellow is also quite opaque and strong, so if you're looking to produce a very juicy, vibrant green, uh, that's also very easy to mix with other colors. This one is ideal because very often um, certain yellows just will be harder to produce that maximum vibrancy. Now lastly, I do add a bit of pyrrole scarlet to everything. So in places where I see it turns a little brown or a little warm orange, that's when that comes into play. And those will be most of the details. Now. The way I ended up painting this is highlights first. So I'm painting the lightest lights other than the paper white highlights. Um, and my plan is kind of to jump between them. So I'm gonna finish with the lights, then move on to the black maybe, and then the mid values. I'm not really sure. The thing is I just follow the thing that inspires me next. Um, one thing that's interesting with painting this way is you'll sometimes end up with a lot of white gaps uh, white spaces, I would say too many for my personal taste. That has to do more with how careful you are uh, and how much you take your time. Uh, and that to me has to do with my mood and if I feel like painting this way, because very often I will not. I will feel like just vomiting something on the paper. Uh, and I find it very uninspiring when everything is sterile and ready to go in a way uh, where all the pencil lines are there and everything has been set and all the colors have been mixed in large quantities. There's something to me personally, again, I'm not telling you that's how you should do it 
at all. Uh, if anything, you should not do what I do, which is why I hope for this video to be more talkative than a how-to. Um, but to me, very personally, there's something uninspiring about that. Um, again, there are paths and ways of painting that produce more accuracy, and I've done these before, and I'm still doing them. So it's not you know, exclusive. You don't have to choose one. Uh, but it's more a function of my mood. Now, here comes a fun part. Uh, so if you do want to take a look, um, this is where we finally delineate um, the, the dark shadows from the highlights or the lighter areas. And by doing so, we'll also bring out some of the paper white highlights. And these are great fun. Um, so a lot of the preparations I made in the previous wash, if you want to call it that, uh, will now come into play. And this is not easy, but it's also not hard painting this way. Um, the reason I say it's not easy is because, yes, you don't have the guidance of a framework of pencil. <coughs> but the reason why it's also not hard is because nothing is hard when you're fully engaged with the painting process. And that's a topic for another time. And I do have something in the works for that. Um, but when you're fully engaged with the process, you end up putting everything just where it needs to be. And everything just looks perfect. I have a few paintings like this, um, out of the hundreds at least of paintings that I painted. It could be in the thousand by now or thousands. Um, I could probably say tens, low tens, 10, 20, 30, uh, have been fully, with full engagement. Um, I would say probably around, not more than 30. Um, and it's not really a function of, um, it's not really a choice for me. It's more about if the scene chooses me. And that is quite similar to watercolor. And I talk about this a lot. And I do get people on the channel that um, contend with, what medium to use and what kind of art they want to make. Uh, and some people are, you know, they, they, they say they, you know, visit, revisit watercolor and then quit and then come back. And, you know, you don't have to do anything. If, if a medium doesn't feel right for you, you, you have no obligation to create even. You have no obligation to do anything. Um, you have no duty. You have no responsibility to create none of that. Um, creativity and art is a form of losing oneself in the process. Um, and if you don't, then you don't. But to me personally, and we're, we're going to talk about paintings in a second, but watercolor has chosen me. I don't know how exactly I got to do this. Uh, honestly, looking back, I didn't have much choice. It's the only medium that captivated me beyond pencil and pen, which I love. Um, and that's what I found myself always returning to. Um, and I don't know what it is exactly. I could give you a lot of reasons for, you know, the flow and uh, the fact that it's fast and immediate and for how you can vary. Here's some mixing, by the way. I wanted to say how quickly you can mix stuff. And here we are with a mixing time lapse. Uh, how quickly you can change things on the spot. But I think on a deeper level, watercolor speaks to me. Um, in terms of the spontaneous nature of the medium and how much it is very much a reaction and engagement with the very moment of painting. Now, you get that engagement in other mediums too, but not in quite the same way uh, as you do with watercolor. Uh, there's always engagement uh, and, and um, beautiful, masterful paintings are every day there's someone out there making something, not just with watercolor, uh, with complete engagement. Um, but something about how it tests your instincts and your ability to adapt to what's going on on paper, where the time frame is seconds and minutes rather than, and probably not even minutes, seconds to a minute, uh, and not hours and days and months, which is a different story. Not a better or worse story, but it's a different story. Uh, something about that has always captivated me when it comes to watercolor. And with time, 
more and more aspects were discovered by me that fascinate me. One of them being, me muting my phone right now, <laughs> one of them being uh, how the, the piece of art or the picture even is created. Um, and you'll notice as we progress and whether you're watching the entire process or you're kind of uh, looking at it uh, every couple of seconds or minutes, and uh, the, the image is created slowly and gradually. It's just built. Um, and the more context you add, it just shows up. Um, and, and you know, the more you can enhance it and change it and shift it towards what you want. Um, and the more it matches your vision. Uh, I find that to be a very fun experience. And I find that you have a lot of freedom within that. Um, people, uh, and I've commented this before, I feel like watercolor is uh, like going up on a highway or a roller coaster with very um, clear predetermined enter and exit points where, uh, you know, you have to continue. But uh, the more I, the more I learn, not, not intellectually, but viscerally about the medium, the more I find that there are a lot of interchanges and a lot of turns that you decide while driving on that highway or that roller coaster uh, that you can decide to take. So you have a lot of control over the process. And that's an analogy I used a lot before going up on a highway or a roller coaster. I just discovered there are so many uh, junctions, intersections, interchanges where you have control, where you can drive the painting where you want it to be. And the more I find that, the more freedom I gain. And uh, I think this is all leading up to something uh, very interesting. Um, and it's something I'm going to test out in the upcoming weeks. I actually have a couple of good ideas um, of a different way of creation that is just the result is a chef's kiss. Uh, I do still have uh, big aspirations when it comes to watercolor. This is something I talked about before. I do still want to be one of, if not the best in the world. Not in order to beat anyone, but just because I want to see how far I can push watercolor perfection. It doesn't necessarily have to uh, have to be uh, in regards. So let me let Ruth in the room. She's crying. Come here. It doesn't necessarily have to be with realism or uh, details even, but rather the overall picture and how much I can challenge, not myself, I don't need to challenge myself, but challenge the very essence of watercolor and see what I can capture with it. Um, if you've watched the latest, I'm gonna let Ruth out now, obviously. If you watched, sorry for the noise. That's it. Sorry about that awkward cut. If you watched the recent uh, Painting Masters episode, I have discussed um, how I was very inspired. Episode 85, if you wonder. Um, I, was, uh, I did mention how inspired I was to test out that thesis of painting fully in the moment, fully directly, fully plan air and seeing what I can achieve. I, uh, I do see the value of even returning to the same spot. It doesn't have to be in one sitting, but most of how watercolor works will probably lend itself really well to being done in one sitting, if I'm being honest with you, just because of how fast it is. Um, so I, I do have some big, big plans in that regard. Um, now, I do want to mention one thing about this process now. Uh, I'm starting to fill in the blanks for some of the mid values. Uh, so what you're starting to see is um, turning the main focal point, which is, I would say, that big leaf of palm tree that's like dead in the center and sp kind of splits to the right and bottom. Um, I'm adding some information there. Uh, to bring out not only the, you know, the paper white that I've had earlier, but also the um, the light, the mid values next to those brighter yellows. Um, these are things that I could have captured also differently earlier. 
uh, and I'm still I'm still not fully satisfied with how much vibrancy I'm capturing with watercolor. That's another thing I would say. Um, it is a decent level and I have learned a lot about how to do this. Uh, the thing is you can't really layer uh, another brighter layer always. Sometimes you'll get the chance to do that and it will depend on the color. Some the colors achieve different levels of vibrancy and different values. That's just how it is. Um, but very often you won't get the chance to. Um, and I kind of want to figure out, you know, uh, how I can find that spot. And if I can do all of that while doing it plein air, that would be, again, chef's kiss. Um, when I think of someone who was in a complete uh, world and category of his own, I am thinking about someone like... Um, John Singer Sargent, that would be a big one. Um, Andrew Wyeth is another one. Uh, and if, I, if we look at modern artists, someone who's fully in a category of their own, I do have to mention Joseph Zbukovic uh, and also Alvaro Castaneda to an extent, but Joseph Zbukovic in particular, some of his works do feel like very much in a category of their own and it's hard to fully see because there are a lot of people painting like him but he was the first in a way um, and that's what makes him to me the the point of comparison um, there are a lot of wonderful artists but they paint very similarly to him and I do know because I did do my research that he was the first who developed that kind of a style and if there's anything I don't want my artists to look like anyone else's, not out of any revelatory feelings. Uh, I really don't have much interest in reacting to other people's artwork. So it's not going to be a copycat, but also not revelatory. Uh, my interest lies squarely in finding my perfect creation. And, you know, every once in a while, Every couple of months, sometimes weeks, sometimes a year or two, I do discover something that falls into that category, which makes me very, very happy. And I think the more I allow myself to trust my instincts and to really just go for it fully like you see here, um, I get another glimpse of where I want to be. Uh, and that to me is far superior to following a predetermined path. Um, so I'm signing this one out and let me show you the final result. Uh, the scan does it much more justice. In fact, let me zoom out a bit and maybe do a bit of a comparison between the two. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I want to thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I want to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon. If you want to see your name up on the screen and know that you have my biggest huge appreciation for allowing me to do what I do. Feel free to check it out. There are a few exclusive posts there, some personal updates, some exclusive painting processes. Be sure to check that out. And if you're interested more in the courses and learning, you can check out my frustration-free watercolor course for painting loosely with complete freedom, getting the results you want. Or you can check out the watercolor realism course where we dive into values and edges and shapes and how to create that magical moment where you yourself see your painting as something realistic that reads realistically. I hope you'll give these a try. Thank you so, so much. Leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts and I will talk to you again soon.